So we had some foreshadowing about this earlier today, as Elliot Friedman this morning was tweeting about how Kevin Fiala and the entire thing with him was starting to pick up. Turns out that the LA Kings, big on Fiala an hour ago, indeed the destination now, are the team that have traded for Fiala, and here are the details according to Michael Russo. According to sources, the Wild have traded the rights to pending RFA Kevin Fiala to the Kings, forget this, a 2022 first-round pick, and Brock Faber. Now, we'll get to Brock Faber in a little bit here, but pretty much, Kevin Fiala was traded from Minnesota to LA for a first-round pick and a first-round prospect. That, honestly, is not a lot. And I get it, you're going out there and you're not trading Fiala per se, you're trading for the signing rights to Kevin Fiala, which means that it's not necessarily the player, it's the right to negotiate with that player. And immediately after, we had ourselves a whole bunch of other tweets coming out. This is the J Fresh wins above replacement chart for Kevin Fiala. He's at a 90 percentile wins above replacement metric at 25 years old, 93 percentile offensive strength player, excuse me, even strength offensive player. He is in the bottom 20% of the NHL when it comes to defense, though, but who really cares? Kevin Fiala is good enough at offense that you don't really care about the defense over here. This is also the news that we got that the Kings and Fiala have come to an extension, approximately $7.9 million a year at seven years apiece. Now, for Kevin Fiala, if we go over to his entire profile right here, he's a player that I think a lot of people, not just Kings fans, but Senators fans, Devils fans, have had their eyes on as well. So if you're a fan of any of these extra teams, then please let me know in the comments what are your thoughts about Kevin Fiala getting sent over for not just a first-round pick and Brock Faber, but what you think about him just getting sent over at all. Fiala, as we said, 25 years old, is a guy who put up a boatload of points this previous season, 85 points in 82 games played. He had a 30-goal year. The fact is, though, Kevin Fiala in the postseason only had three points in six games, and a lot of Minnesota Wild fans would be quick to point out that this guy did not really look all too great in that series against the St. Louis Blues. Now, in the regular season, he was an absolute monster, and you could probably expect him to be a consistent 25-30 goal guy year in and year out. And what is it that the LA Kings could probably need more of? Hey, it's goal scoring. We talked about this in all the videos discussing Connor Garland, Alex DeBrinket, but the Kings kind of overachieved this previous season, making the playoffs and going as far as they did against the Oilers. The fact is, though, against an Edmonton team that boasted the likes of McDavid, Dreisaitl, etc., the Kings just kind of didn't get the amount of goal scoring and goal support that you probably would have wanted to see. And so, with guys like Arthur Kaliev becoming better as their years go on, with guys like Victor Arvidsson unfortunately not suiting up in that playoff series, you add on some extra players like Debrinket, maybe like a Kevin Fiala, and that could add an element of goal scoring that hadn't been there before. Guess what? You got that Fiala, and it's for a price that I believe is honestly pretty solid here. Before we move over onto that, though, the contract $7.9 million is not updated on Elite Prospects or Cap Friendly yet, but seven years long, this guy's going to be 32 by the time that contract expires. If he actually just plays to this standard the entire time, then you're pretty much golden right here. If you get yourselves a point per game, 25, 30 goal guy year in, year out, you're probably laughing to the bank and you're probably thinking that the contract is worth it. The LA Kings have the money to afford this. The Minnesota Wild did not, which is why this trade was made. You go over onto the draft pick that the LA Kings are sending over to the Minnesota Wild. It's right here, 19th overall. So not the best pick in the world, but not the worst pick in the world either. You have yourselves a comfortable spot in the latter half of the first round. But the fact that it's only 19th overall and this player right here, Brock Faber, getting sent over to Minnesota, it kind of makes me feel a little bit strange because if I think about Kevin Fiala and the magnitude of a player he is, and I think about a first round pick and Brock Faber coming back the other way, I kind of feel like the Minnesota Wild did not get as much as they could have. Now, I really like Brock Faber. Don't get me wrong. This guy... As you can see in the scattering report, great skater who uses his weight to shift well while gliding to avoid getting knocked over. There are some defenders who defend the blue line violently, others more calculated. Faber suffocates the opposition, guiding them with his stick to the outside and enveloping them. He is a pretty good defensive prospect, and he had 14 points in 32 games played this season for the Gophers. 
It's kind of interesting, though, because to me, Brock Faber isn't necessarily a guy that I look at and I see, okay, he is a top two defenseman, or he's a guaranteed top four defenseman. I think he is a top four ceiling at the NHL level, but is he guaranteed to hit that? I'm not really too sure. And so, a top four caliber defenseman that was a second round pick in 2020 by the Kings, a right-handed guy, six feet, 190, as a 19-year-old, plus a 19th overall pick... I personally think that's a little bit of an underpayment for what Kevin Fiala is worth, but I guess you could go out there and say, hey, Lego, it's the signing rights to Fiala, not Fiala himself. You said it yourself, so that's kind of why the price for this guy wasn't really as big as maybe some insiders would have had us believing when they said that this guy could have fetched, I don't know, a top prospect and a top pick as well as another young roster player. Fiala went out there and got just a mid-round pick, and a pretty decent prospect. Not the best prospect in the world, but a pretty decent one. It's kind of crazy to me because the LA Kings still have some other players in their pipeline that I do see tremendous value in. Obviously, Brent Clark is there. Helga Granz is there. If you're talking about right side defensemen, you have some other guys scattered throughout the system that I think provide significant value. The Minnesota Wild didn't get the prospect that I think that the Kings probably would have not wanted to give up. And it's kind of funny because Kevin Fiala going back the other way makes things so much better for the Kings. And I hate that this happened because I'm a Canucks fan, and the LA Kings play the Canucks like six, seven times a year. Kevin Fiala absolutely tortured the Vancouver Canucks in the playoffs in 2020, so I do not want to see this guy play off against Vancouver more and more, but you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you're a fan of the Wild, if you're a fan of the Kings, if you're a Canucks fan even, if you're a fan of the Senators or the Devils, what do you think about this trade, and what do you think about the price that the LA Kings had to give up to get this player in return? I haven't seen anything on Twitter about what other pieces have been involved, it's just been Fiala for Brock Faber and a first, so you can let me your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I troll 99 and bye.